Oh, hello there. <sighs> okay, well. Reach the goal to gain access to the blank log. Three, 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 eight. Oh, okay. After Alterna. All right. Not even Orc has like. Just a quick level. Won't take you long. Yeah, with three, 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 this better be a short one. This is not a short level. No. Oh, fuck. No! Oh, my. I'm an idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. I do. It's why I enjoy the agent, inner agent three fight a lot. It's why I enjoy um, secret boss battles, I guess, because they just such as. In Energy 3 because of um, just the absurd challenge developers can put in just throw everyone off board Such as like uh, you know, like I like before um, I even mentioned uh, Mario Galaxy I don't know if it's one or two. I think both of them are fairly no actually you killed two is the one Galaxy 2 had that What was it a flawless run or something you have one life point and you had to complete the entire stage without getting hit. And I guess there's also the 3D World one, but I never attempted that one. I probably never about at this point. Challenges are fun, because they get me super serious like this one. Yeah, like in Cage 2. If you search up like Cage 2, uh, Lingering Well, that's like a very famous like secret boss battle type deal. What the fuck? Okay. Because the sheer difference between that boss fight and the rest of Cage 2 is just absurd. It's like a totally different level of skill you need to have in that game. Same thing, I guess, with the Sephiroth class fight as well. Like, you need to know Sora's kit and what to use. And what skills to really just, like, exploit and abuse in that game.
but I admire it. I beat Sephiroth on Cage 2, but Langering Will, that's a no, that's a no-go for me. That's like too hard. There comes a point where it's just some things are just a bit too difficult and I would have to commit and I just don't feel like doing that. But challenges like this, or I guess like Mario stages, or the Internet Agent boss fight are fine with me. Like, it's challenging enough, but like... It's doable if you're... If you tr uh, enough error, try on error. Can't be said for some things, though. Some of them is just like... Just no. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, you're shitting me. You're fucking... Pop altar. Oh, I don't... Sheldon. X marks the garden. Okay, good. I'm. <sighs> All right, this is better. If I had to start from the back, I would just go insane. Oh, is this what you mean by girl power station?
Nice. <laughs> oh. Yeah, let me like reef slider off of this. No. <laughs> Alternate world champ. Well, I do have the stream. <laughs> oh my god. Teddy band. Get a teddy band. What is this? Log.exe. Recall for a moment the first apocalypse that devastated the human race. Those who escaped into the. Devon. No. <laughs> For a moment, the first apocalypse that devastated the human race. Those who escaped into the caverns of Eternal were not the sole survivors. There were others who escaped via a giant rocket ship, the Ark Pearl. Pearl. <laughs> Polaris. <laughs> Chat. Polaris. Launched in the nick of time, the ship was laden with many of Earth's species that had been placed in a cold sleep. The mission was simple find. It was simple. Find another place to replace Earth. Planet to replace Earth. Considering the circumstances of its launch, the Polaris, the Polaris had a smooth voyage until it reached the edge of the solar system. It was at the point that debris struck the vessel, vessel damaging its navigation system. It, the crew was able to turn the ship around and head back toward Earth. But the effort was in vain. There was not enough fuel to attempt a landing. The Ark Polaris drifted aimlessly for 10,000 years. Aeons passed. The once stable orbit of the Polaris decayed over time until the ship found itself inescapable in the in inescapable pull of the Earth's gravity. Rianchi was not kind to its inhabitants. All perished save one. Bear number th 03 or 03. An experimental subject who had retained consciousness within his cold hibernation survived. For 12,000 years he had dreamed and plotted. Fully awakened, Baron 03 came to the terrible realization. He had not landed on a new planet at all. He was back on Earth, and yet not an Earth he knew. This Earth, it seemed, was dominated by sea creatures, not a single mammal to be found. In the course of his search for even a single fellow mammal, Bear 03 used the navigational equipment from the wreckage of the Ark Polaris to discover Alterna. It was a wasteland, of course, but a few of the liquid crystals that once covered the walls and ceiling remained. With knowledge built during his thousands of years of dreaming, he repaired some of Eternal's facilities and began researching the crystals. This research bore fruit when Barrow 3 compounded some of the liquid crystals with his own fur. This experiment created an entirely new substance with one terrifying property. It could transform any living creature into a mammal. Barrel 3 realized the implications immediately. He re could restore the planet to a mammalian paradise. He began stockpiling, stockpiling fuzzy ooze, as he called it, with Alternos' in still intact rocket. For such venture, for such a venture, he would require the ac acquisition of thousands of golden eggs. These were used in creation of the fuzzy ooze. Although the exact details have been never have never been recorded in my memory banks, but Barrel Three had a plan. He founded a corporation that would go on to employ locals to collect his golden eggs under the name Grisco Industries. <laughs> Mister Grizz, as he was now known, would pay handsomely for them. With fuzzy ooze peeking thanks to the assistance of unsuspecting inklings and octolings. Mr. Grizz took the final steps to set his plan in motion. 
the rocket was loaded, it wouldn't be long now. Wow. It wouldn't be long now. <laughs>